Folks, if you're willing and able, would you stand as we sing, I want to walk as a child of the light. which is the last book in the Old Testament before you get to the New Testament. It's chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. See, I'm sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, as you're able, would you please stand as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. <clears throat> Friends, today is the first Sunday of the month. It's the second Sunday of Advent, first Sunday of the month, and so we will be uh, serving communion here in just a little bit. In the United Methodist Church, everybody that's present is welcome and invited to come. And the only thing we ask is that they answered this invitation. Now today, I didn't get it in the computer for the prayer of confession. So you're just, if you, some of you will remember it. We've said it most of our lives. Those of you that don't, it's okay. I'll just say it on everybody's behalf. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him or earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together now we'll be singing, uh, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And uh, let me get my hymnal open. church out of a world that is filled with chaos disruption and violence and we come into this sanctuary where we can experience peace where many of the troubles of the world are left behind oh we still worry about our loved ones that are sick and we pray for them and we are concerned for those that we miss every Sunday because of their health or because of uh, other circumstances, and we pray for them. But as we join together, God, during Advent, we look for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have an Advent candle, and we'll be lighting it, and we light 
two candles this week. And every week as we get closer to the Christmas, the light gets brighter until Christmas morning when we light the Christ candle and we realize that Christ has been born, something new is happening once again. So we ask you to forgive us for the times we don't take it serious. The times that we get caught up in the world's idea of holidays. And guide us. You promised to send the Holy Spirit to guide us. God, we count on the guidance of the Spirit to show us where to go, how to teach, what to teach, and how to become the heart and hands and feet of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist came to prepare the way a messenger. Jesus came to introduce us to love. A messenger. And God sent us, sends us into the world to offer Christ. Messengers all. We're thankful for Jesus' leadership, his teaching, and his presence with us even now. As we pray the prayer he taught us, which says, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. We're going to sing together now, number 99. It's, uh, well, you won't have a hymnal, but you can in the future. Uh, it's my tribute. You'll know the words will be on the screen. From the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter. In the fifteenth year of the reign of the Imperial and of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip was ruler of the region of Atare and Traconius, and Licentius under the rule of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around Jordan proclaiming a baptism of repentance. A baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. 
and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways be made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. And you may be seated. You know, John the Baptist wouldn't be very popular today. He wouldn't have been very popular any time. He wore dirty, gruff clothes. Uh, camel hair. Uh, didn't bathe a lot. He uh, ate locusts. Which are bugs. We don't really know what locusts are here, but, but we consider c cicadas locusts. But just think about that. They'd be really juicy, right? Yeah. Oh. Well, they have a lot of protein in them. And if you get disastrous out in the world, you can always eat those things, you know? Yeah, right. I've eaten crickets once. They were okay, but they were <laughs> they were, they were chocolate covered. But uh, he was not one of the guys that was uh, you invited to the party. He was somebody that was on the outside, and you might imagine that he was standing on the mountain somewhere saying, Repent! Come and be baptized! And a lot of people went, and, and we confuse that sometimes with the baptism that we do now, because we now we believe that one baptism for the remission of sins, this was, uh, this was not a saving baptism like Jesus gives us, this was a washing of the dirt and filth of the world off of you over and over again. There might be some merit to that, and that's what we do now, right? We, we, we bathe more regularly than John the Baptist did. We have better facilities, and, uh, and most of the time, most of us smell a lot better. But John the Baptist was, was a, a messenger sent to prepare the way. But his expectation was that the Jesus, the Savior that was coming, was going to come with armor and a big white horse, and was going to have power in an army and was just going to say, you got to straighten them out. That was the way the world was going to be fixed. We'd like that, wouldn't we? Wouldn't it just like somehow God just send somebody tomorrow and fix everything? Yep. People, everybody that needed it would have health care. Everybody was hungry would be able to be fed. Everybody in Washington would get along. People would begin to focus on what's good for the kingdom instead of what's good for them. I think we'd love it. And then we'd probably hate it. Uh, have you not heard what people say about mandates? Even if they're from God? God doesn't give them to us, does He? He doesn't ever do that. What He says is, you who are weary, come to Me. You decide. You are the one that professes me. I want to save you all. Some of you apparently don't want to be saved. Now I know that's taking a little liberty with the scripture. I don't 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 make the book of Jack somewhere because um, it's probably heretical and they'd kick me out of the church. But but the, the whole deal is what I'm trying to say here, friends, is that, that God gave us the power to decide. But he also tells us, make those decisions in the light of Christ for what's best for the community. And we struggle with that. <laughs> I was talking to a lady from this community the other day. As you probably have noticed coming to and from church, we have road bumps now. <coughs> uh, I'm glad they don't slow the traffic down 100%, but they help some. At least those guys that were going in the little bitty cars hooking them down the road to 70, they're not doing that now. It helps some. We set out the pumpkin patch. We're seeing some improvement. So they put in road bumps, and now the people that wanted the road bumps are mad because they didn't put the sign in the right place next to the road bump. I mean, we are just never happy. Amen. I mean, how many of you have said, they don't need a stop sign here? These red lights, aren't they a little too long? <coughs> hey, if you drive down Spencer Highway, anybody pays attention to them anyway. <laughs> that highway part, they take that serious. This is Spencer Highway. <laughs> Let's go. you got to be careful. 
So this, this John the Baptist guy comes and he is kind of preparing us that something big, something magnificent, something powerful is going to happen. And then guess what? Jesus is born and he's born into a questionable situation with a carpenter daddy and a very young mother in a very poor town and immediately has to flee because of the census. Now, John doesn't quit preaching. We know that John's still preaching even when Jesus grows up, right? Because there's some question about who's who. So he's still out there preaching. He's a few months older than Jesus, but he's out telling the good news. But even John, I think, is, and we'll hear about this later on in the Christian year, I think is somewhat surprised when Jesus shows up at the river. The Messiah they expected was not the Messiah they got. And the God that we worship and pray for is not the God that's going to sit down and say, and, well, and threaten us. He's going to let you go wherever you want to go. And He's going to be with you when you go there, but He is going to rejoice when you make the decision to turn toward the light. It says that in the Scripture. When one returns, there's a celebration in heaven. We have lots of opportunities to turn toward God. In fact, Jesus says, whenever righteous acts are being done, they're done in my name. Prepare the way. Malachi talked about it. There's going to be somebody coming. These people had no idea what to expect, but for them, the only expectation, because they lived in a society that was dominated by the Roman Empire, the only thing they could imagine fixing it was a power bigger than Rome. And they get a little baby in a manger. They know it's special. We're going to talk more about that as we get close. But I want to take that just a step further today. So we get this right. Moses, in a way, was a messenger, right? He, he told the people about the promised land. And Elijah and, and Elisha, they were messengers, prophets, we called them. Even Malachi and Jeremiah, those guys are all prophets. What are they doing? They're preparing us. The whole entire Old Testament prepares us for the coming of Christ. Then we start out in the New Testament. We're being prepared. John prepares us. And Jesus comes along and prepares us to tell us, teaches us, shows us how to live in the kingdom. And friends, I believe now we're supposed to go through this process ourselves. And the messenger now looks just like us. I was at a meeting Friday night. 125 years of this group. They stood up and they said, we realized we couldn't have been here if the ones hadn't been here 125 years ago. I want you to think just a minute about 1937. It's my understanding when a church was formed on this corner, it was called Golden Acres Community Church. It wasn't Methodist yet. They were preparing the way. They secured the property. They started it out. They couldn't even have imagined what 2021 would look like. And frankly, I can't imagine what 2041 is going to look like. As much change as there's been. And then they had a little church, and they moved a little wooden building. They moved, and then they built this sanctuary, and then they built the education wing, and, and then they brought the, the fellowship hall because I think they anticipated that it was going to be temporary until they could build something. And I know they had a vision for that because the building over there has a cutout in the brick wall that's supposed to be an opening for a fellowship hall. They prepared the way for us. And now, my friends, what are we doing to prepare the way for these young people, these generations that are coming up, these kids that are going to grow up, the people that are not only going to lead our country, but will eventually lead the world in the years to come? Oh, we are happy that they learned the rules. Are we teaching them about God? Can they see us as agents of the living God? Do they see Jesus Christ in us? I was talking to a guy last night after worship. We live in, a, in this crazy world right now. Everybody wants to see it. 
They don't see ever. If, if you're going to tell me about it, show me. Give me the details. Well, let me tell you, friends, the details about Jesus Christ, they do exist in this book, but mostly they're faith details. Oh, you go to the Holy Land and they'll show you a place that might have been his birthplace. They'll show you a place that might have been the tomb. And they will tell you, we think. They'll be glad to talk to you about how the crucifixion went. There's, as you know, no eyewitnesses. Bill Gibson made a movie called The Passion. I think he got it pretty wrong, but he got it. We create these visions in our head of what it looked like, but this is a faith story, friends. And if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings, if you don't believe that He can fix the world, if you don't believe that He can help you overcome the adversity of life, then you're going to have a hard time believing that He's really the King of Kings that can take you into eternity. you got to start somewhere. And I'm concerned that, that, that me and every other preacher I know sometimes reaches a place Especially during Advent when we, we think, well, you know, everybody coming to our churches, they're all baptized, they're all saved. I just need to tell stories and make them feel good about it. I want to tell you, friends, Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. I believe He really lived. I believe He really walked on this planet. I believe He was really persecuted and killed. I believe He was put into a tomb. And I believe He rose again. And I believe He is the King of all kings. Amen. And if you don't believe that yet, it's okay. Because I want to tell you, my belief in that is strong enough for you to just hang on to it for a bit. We can't all get to the same place at the same time if we try. What we can do is make progress where we were yesterday and today. We should be a little further down the road. And it's my prayer that we hope to be a little further down tomorrow. <clears throat> Wesley actually said, you know, you've heard me talk plenty of times about preventing grace or preventing grace and justifying grace and sanctifying grace. John Wesley absolutely believed that it was possible to attain Christian perfection on this planet. He never claimed it. What that is, friends, is not perfection like you think of or I think of. That's perfection in Christ. In other words... The mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, takes over my human frailty, and I began to see things as Jesus saw. Tony Evans, y'all, some of y'all probably heard him preach. He's up in Dallas. He's a great preacher. He says the problem with the light of Christ is the more of the light you're in, the more you see it's wrong. It's so easy for us human beings to get into a place where we can point out all the wrongs. But for Advent, at least, for the next few weeks, why don't we consider looking for what's good, what's right? Because when we turn to Christ, He won't show us anything but the good. He will lead us to salvation. He will take us to that place. And it is His desire, I believe, that we carry some people along with us on the way. We have a great opportunity right now to demonstrate love wherever we go. I put it on Facebook the other day. But you know, just once in a while, you ought to try it. Let somebody in on the freeway. <laughs> Instead of doing what I like to do, is I ain't getting them in, they're going on the side. No, no. But why don't we, let them see what happens. Let somebody go in front of you at the grocery store. Uh, you know, they get to these four-way stops. People in Pasadena don't have a clue what to do with them. So sit there till everybody else goes. Just kindness. When all else fails, just be kind. Amen. Amen. And it would be amazing how much better we would feel. I guarantee you, being kind will not raise your blood pressure. And sometimes it's really a good way to get even with people. <laughs> people want to be horrible and mean and hostile or tell you no. Just be kind. I understand. Thank you. It even works on your children. I, I, I learned to use that years ago. They'd be mad about something. I'd say, okay. Dad, you're not mad too? Sure I'm mad. We don't sound mad. 
What good would that do? Kindness, I think. So, so what Jesus is, is coming into the world, I believe, to save the whole world, all of it, 100% of it. I believe that he's counting on us to do some work. I believe that the good news of Jesus Christ is life-saving. And I believe that going around with the Bible and, and, and using that to beat people up with their sinfulness and wrongfulness is not useful. I believe what is useful is to look for the good, look for the bright, look for the wholesome. I'm pretty sure God had a good intention for every body that was ever born. And where did it go wrong? I don't know. But this church, we get an opportunity right now to do an angel tree, for example. There's some kids that won't get a Christmas present for their mom or dad because they're in prison. Not the kids' fault. We're going to send a gift on behalf of the one that's in prison. Now we think in terms of, boy, that's going to feel good for the kid. They're going to get a present from dad. But you know what? When dad or mom find out that somebody stood in the gap for them, I believe that could be life changing. It's a bigger picture than just by presence. It's an opportunity for us to be a part of changing the world. That's the same thing that we do when we do so many other things we do here with Bill Nash and, and the blessing box out there. You know, that's the kind of stuff when we can get outside of ourselves and look out, I believe we're doing what we should be doing. I uh, have a friend, her name is Karen Moran. She's a, uh, I think she's a district superintendent up in the San Antonio area now, but she and I were in seminary together and. Uh, she came down one time at, when I was serving at the other church to talk to us about evangelism. And, and, and you know, we could do this today. I'm not going to do it today because we need to move on. But she had everybody in the group. We have about 50 people there lined up to make a circle. <coughs> she said, that's the church. And she was right. That's the church. We're all sitting in a circle looking inward. She turned it around and made every other person look out. So we had one person looking in, one looking out, all around the circle. When our church is able to look out into the community to see what's needed, and then work to fill that gap, then we're doing the same thing we're doing with that parent where we're standing in the gap for them to buy a gift. There's a lot of needs in this community. I don't know what they all are, and I certainly know we don't have the resources to fix them all, but we can become aware of what people need, how they need it, and we can pray. And there's no cost at all to that. I think as we identify and we learn stuff, we'll be able to do more. I think 2022 is going to be a great year for our church. I think people are redefining church. I, I don't know what it's going to look like. We talk about this every time I meet with the district superintendent. Things are changing. We know. I can tell you. There's some people that were here last two years ago that we're not going to see again in church. I, I pray for them. I wish that wasn't true. It's an easy habit to get out of, as you all all probably know. But that doesn't mean that we just give up. We keep inviting and offering. We keep telling the story. When you get a chance, tell people what a great time you had at church. Tell them it was a great sermon, even if it was mediocre. <laughs> and invite them to come. I mean, sometimes they are mediocre. But, you know, I, I, I just think that we're, we're sitting on, the, on the, uh, the brink of something. And, and I just hate to think about those people. And I hear it. Oh, I pray for God to come back. Now, I don't think God ever left. But I'm not sure we've been listening to God very well for a few years. And I don't mean us individually. The Christian community. And I think we need to start listening to what it is God wants the church to be in every community. And how the, the church can make a difference and how we can be a life-changing experience for people and how they can come to understand the good news of Jesus Christ, not just by the words, but also by our deeds and actions that we are. The messenger. It was Moses. It was John the Baptist. In a way, it was Jesus. Now it's us. Second week of Advent. The light is going to get brighter as we light the candle. <clears throat> Christmas Day, the light will be the brightest. 
what are we going to do? Will the light of Christ shine in us? I pray that it will. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, if I'd really been on my game today, there would have been two candles already lit, but I wasn't. I mean, one already lit. So I'm going to light one before we do this. And uh, there is a screen in there, Johnny. You probably have already found it. For the lighting of the Advent wreath. So I'm going to read some words, and then we're going to sing a verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We're ready. Every, all the stars are lined up. All right, we light this second candle. <coughs> See, the light gets brighter. As a symbol of Christ the way, may the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, and o Once again, in the United Methodist Church, when we serve Holy Communion, everyone in the room is invited. Uh, so we invite you to come. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God. You're the creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send empty away. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on the cross. <coughs> By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. 
Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Present table is prepared. Uh, you know, our right now we're still doing our offering. Ooh, my hearing aid just turned itself on. Uh, we're doing our offering in the back uh, in a basket, and in the front up here, this is a, a bucket that we're doing to give money to the Methodist Children's Home. Uh, it's my hope. A few years ago, I was able to go there directly and deliver to them. Uh, a check that we collected, it would be done in January. So we'll call all of our communion offerings, Saturday night we do communion every week, and our communion offering for today will go to the Methodist Children's Home uh, probably sometime in January. So nickels, dimes, and quarters, just spare change that you might have, and it'll make a difference as we send it to one of the greatest places that, that helps kids that are going through the CPS program and so forth. Friends, the table's prepared. Come to this place for heaven and earth.
Well, friends, we're reaching the time when now we're going to celebrate as we get ready to leave. I hope everybody continues to have a safe few days. We'll look forward to uh, next weekend as we light the third candle in the Advent wreath. Now we're going to sing Standing on the Promises. And as that it seems to me you'd need to be standing for that. So as you're able, would you please stand as we sing that right here? Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. hear this prayer as we go today. O oh God, the giver of life, we pray for the church throughout the world. Sanctify its life. Renew its worship. Empower its witness. Restore its unity. Remove from your people all pride and every prejudice that dulls their will for unity. Strengthen the work of all those who strive to seek that common obedience that will bind us together. Heal the divisions which separate your children from one from another, that they may keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. <laughs>